This week's blog post is the first in a series on the Flagler Museum in Palm Beach, Florida. Henry Morrison Flagler, 1830 to 1913, became enormously wealthy as one of the founders of Standard Oil, which he joined in 1867. He was credited by John D. Rockefeller with developing the legal form that allowed Standard to consolidate its branches which had been incorporated in a multitude of states and run all the branches from a central office. This is the trust which those antitrust laws of the late 19th and early 20th centuries aimed to destroy. But meanwhile, before that happened, in the late 1870s, Flagler visited Florida with his sick wife. Perhaps not surprisingly, given that he grew up near Rochester, New York, Flagler fell in love with Florida's warmth and sunshine. He became the state's most tireless promoter. In 1882, he gave up his day-to-day involvement with Standard Oil and began construction of a 450-room hotel in St. Augustine. But even in St. Augustine, temperatures sometimes fell far below freezing. Flagler decided to build hotels further south on the Atlantic coast. Of course, to make the hotels accessible, transportation was required. From the 1890s to 1912, Flagler built the Florida East Coast Railway. It ran from Jacksonville to Miami and then across the Florida Keys, 128 miles of mostly open water, to Key West. You can see the the route of it in this map that's on display at the Flagler. The railroad brought Florida a thriving tourist business and it allowed farmers to sell their produce far to the north. Flagler is credited as the founder of Palm Beach and Miami and is often called the inventor of modern Florida. In Palm Beach, Flagler constructed a mansion for his third wife, whom he had married in 1901. Whitehall, with 75 rooms, was designed by Carrere and Hastings, who also designed New York Public Library at 42nd Street. Whitehall was completed in 1902. The Flagler Museum has a terrific app for iPhone and Android that describes the rooms in the mansion and gives some background on the building and on the life of the Flaglers. You can listen to it without actually being in the Flagler. My only complaint about the app is that it has only one photo per room, so you can consider these three posts on the Flagler Museum as a supplement to the app. I'm not going to repeat information on the app, just add some notes from the Flagler's brochure that they hand out for a self-guided tour. I hope this will tease you into visiting the Flagler for yourself. One of the fascinating bits in the Flagler Museum's app is the discussion of the imagery outside and indoors. The theme is moving from chaos to civilization. The classical figures on the huge urns that flank the entrance are a part of that theme, as are the paintings on the ceiling of the Grand Hall. On the right is the ceiling of the Grand Hall, which has Apollo and the Muses. The Grand Hall is about 5,000 square feet, which was appropriate for entertaining on a huge scale. When it was constructed, it was the largest interior space in a private home in America. Some people are going to find it unbearable that one couple should have all this living space. But me, I look at Whitehall and I think how wonderful that one couple could afford to add so much beauty to the world. And incidentally, the workers who were paid to create it surely benefited more in the long run, in craftsmanship learned and exercised and in self-esteem, than they would have had the government confiscated Flagler's entire fortune and divvied it up among them. On the left is the staircase going from the Grand Hall up to the second floor, and on the right is an oil portrait of Mr. Flagler that is in the Grand Hall. And now we move on to Mr. Flagler's library. The bust on the library table over here is of Augustus Caesar. Gilded Age magnets saw parallels between the United States and ancient Rome in terms of the practical competence and the culture. On the left, I really like the way this sculpture is silhouetted against the window, even though it makes it very difficult to take a photo of it. Yeah, and you, you can't actually walk over and examine it, so in the blog post I've given you a link to uh, another copy of the sculpture where you can see the details. The library is decorated in the style of the Italian Renaissance. In a building of the 15th century, the ceiling would 
You see the ceiling up here? In the building of the 15th century, the ceiling would have been carved wood with leather insets, tooled leather insets. Here it is cast plaster with fabric insets, which, as the Flagler's brochure points out, made it much faster to create the whole ceiling. This sort of substitution helped make it possible for the huge mansion to be completed in a mere 18 months. This bust up here is the Roman Emperor Caracalla, who died in 217. It is a mystery to me why anyone would want a bust of Caracalla. He is definitely one of the very bad Roman emperors. Oh, and about this picture here. Whitehall was wired for electricity when it was built, but to people who grew up with candles or gas lighting, electric bulbs seemed to cast a very harsh light. In chandeliers such as this one, and chandeliers throughout the mansion, the light is toned down by a bevy of Baccarat crystals. And we have moved on now to the music room. The music room includes a pianola, which is a player piano. That's a roll that tells what keys to tells the machine what keys to press. A regular upright piano that was custom painted, and over here, almost out of the frame, is an organ with 1,249 pipes. The music room also served as a painting and sculpture gallery. Over here on the left, there is a figure by Italian sculptor Emilio Fiaschi called Lady in a Veil. He is showing off his command of marble by making it look transparent. And over here on the right is a Canaletto, one of his famous paintings of Venice. In this one, there are a bunch of paintings that I haven't identified for you. Uh, but you can see the sort of thing the Flagler's liked. And on the lower right over here is Putti playing music, which are probably the late 19th century. Next week we will do another segment on the Flagler. DianeDurantiWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, architecture, and my other obsessions. To join the free Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on your screen or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on dianedurantiwriter.com. As always, thanks for listening.